Happy Groundhog Day, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In today's video, we'll be covering your spring forecast for 2024, giving you temperature trends, precipitation trends, looking forward to the severe weather forecast, and also your snowstorm forecast through the spring season as we go deeper into spring. But before we get to the forecast, if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns across North America, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and you get accurate weather forecasts that way. Also make sure to press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. Let's first look here at the index because we are still in an El Nino right now phase of climate. You can see we are still in a moderate El Nino at a plus 1.2 and positive values indicate El Nino, zero is neutral and negative values are La Nina. And you can see we're clearly at a moderate El Nino right now. And looking at those sea surface temperatures anomalies where you look for an El Nino or a La Nina or even neutral conditions is the equatorial Pacific Ocean just south of Hawaii here and west of South America you can see those warmer than normal sea surface temperatures as of this morning across the equatorial Pacific in indicating that El Nino does persist but looking over the past seven days looking at the sea surface temperature change over the past week we are starting to see some of those sub subsurface water temperatures that are cooling down start to reach the surface here and so as we go deeper into 2024 this will turn our El Nino back to neutral conditions and then eventually back to La Nina. So let's show you this here this is the latest update from the Climate Prediction Center. The red indicates El Nino here and that does continue at least through March at at least a 95% chance through March. Drops to around a 55 percent chance as we get into the April time frame and then once we get into May it looks to turn neutral especially with that 75 percent chance of neutral conditions by May which is late spring so let's look at this month by month let's look at the 500 millibar height anomalies for March of 2024 notice you got the ridging over the top much like we have here in February we have some blocking up in Greenland. So that's gonna force the low pressure systems and our jet stream further across the Southern United States and the Southeast. So that does indicate cooler weather, but more active weather as we go into March. And you can see that here with the temperature anomalies, you have the warmer anomalies over the top here into Canada and the Northern tier of the United States, you have more than normal to below normal anomalies across the Southern and Southeastern United States through March. Looking at precipitation, that's where the active jet stream will be is out west and that'll move into California and the Intermountain West and then we'll start to see more active weather across the southeast here especially the southeast coast places like Louisiana southern Mississippi southern Alabama Florida and then up through the Carolinas there as we go through March so here's my temperature outlook as we go through March we're above normal with our temperatures across portions of the northern United States especially for the upper Midwest and in to the Great Lakes region near normal across the south but there's a couple pockets of slightly below normal or at least below normal temperatures here across the desert southwest into the four corners region but also the southeast coast from the carolinas georgia florida and then down through the gulf coast states during this month and that means some below normal temperatures colder rains can be expected at least for the first half of the month of march and you can see the precipitation outlook through march drier than normal at least a little bit up here across the northern high plains into the upper Midwest. Wetter across portions here of the West, including California, Oregon, Nevada, and into the Four Corners region, near normal across much of the Great Plains, especially the Central and Southern Plains, and then picking back up with more above normal precip across the Southeast Coast with that active subtropical jet as we go through the month of March. Now, turning into April, we start to see some changes here, but still not a lot of changes yet. We still have that blocking over Greenland potentially, but it will weaken a little bit at times through April. So that means our lowering of the pressure won't be as intense through April. So we'll see more variable weather conditions through the month here, but you're still seeing those below normal temperature anomalies showing up on some of the longer range climate models here across the lower 48, but there's some warm air mixed in there as well 
but we also still have that active southern stream jet stream. So the active subtropical jet will continue to pump in moisture from the eastern Pacific Ocean and into the southern and southeastern United States. So the lower Ohio River Valley into the southeast and the east coast will be favored with precip as we go in through April. So let's first look at the temperature outlook for April. Again, much like March, we have above normal temperatures across the Pacific Northwest and into the northern tier of the United States, the northern high plains, the Midwest, including the upper Midwest and into the Great Lakes regions. We're seeing near normal conditions with temperatures across the southeast there and then back across the west. A little pocket here across southern California, central and southern Arizona, New Mexico and west Texas and even down toward the Rio Grande Valley for at least slightly below normal temperatures through April here. Then looking at the precipitation outlook, it turns decidedly drier across the Pacific Northwest there for Washington State, Oregon, Northern Idaho, and Western Montana. And even some of that dry air could make its way southward into Northern California, Northern Nevada, Utah, and into Wyoming. And then we see more drier conditions setting up around the Great Lakes there from Eastern Wisconsin into Michigan, especially the UP of Michigan and much of Lower Michigan there. And then getting into portions of interior New England. We're talking Northern and Northwestern Pennsylvania, Western and upstate New York and northern Vermont as we go through April and then wetter conditions setting up across the central and southern plains and much wetter down here across the lower Mississippi Valley and near the Gulf Coast as we go through the month of April with that active southern jet stream continuing as we go through the month. Now turning into the last month of spring into May, we start to see more significant changes here with the 500 millibar height anomalies. We still have the blocking over the top, but we're gonna decidedly have a ridge begin to build across portions in Northern Mexico and into South Central Texas. And this will eventually shift North out of that region into the Southern US. So our temperature anomalies through May will start to warm up significantly across the middle and Western two thirds of the country, but we'll also have wetter conditions here on the eastern side of that. So across the Mississippi Valley, the Ohio Valley, the upper Midwest, we'll start to see more precipitation through the month of May. So let's first look at the temperature outlook there in May, and it looks all warm across the board here. Everywhere in yellow, you're at least slightly above average with our temperatures. In the orange, we're, uh, we're above average in general. And then the red up here into the upper Great Lakes and upper Midwestern regions, eastern North Dakota, northern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, and northern lower Michigan, that is most above average there as we go into May. A very warm, if not hot, May is on the way here across the north. Looking at precipitation, though, we are seeing some active weather in the middle here. Here. We could start to see some bigger storms erupt in this month across the middle of the country, the heartland, the corn belt, if you will, here. So we'll be keeping an eye on that with more above average precip there. We're starting to dry out with that ridge building out of Mexico into the southern plains. So down here into southeastern New Mexico, the Rio Grande Valley, south central Texas, and southwestern Louisiana will start to get a little bit drier towards May and also out west as well into California, Nevada, Idaho and Oregon and even southwestern Montana will start to see drier weather begin to build as we go deeper into May. So let's now look at the severe weather climatology month by month. So this is starting in March. You can see it starts down to the south here across the southern United States, down across the Deep South and the Dixie Alley region through March. And this is what we see climatologically. And as we go into April, that starts to move its way off to the West. You can see the bullseye here across Oklahoma and North Texas during April. And then climatologically, May is more of the more active months in the spring for severe weather across the Great Plains and even up into the Midwest, the Ohio Valley and the Tennessee Valley. So all across the board, May is usually one of the more active months for severe weather. So let's look at my severe weather forecast for March. And you can see the areas in red, that's where we have the greatest concentration of severe weather here. And you can see that is out across California, Southern Nevada and Western and Southwestern Arizona through March. We could have some severe weather events with that active subtropical jet 
some unstable conditions out there at times through March. And then the main corridor over here across the southeast and the deep south, this includes the Dixie Alley region and the Gulf Coast states. And this could be as far north as Missouri, Kansas, and southern Illinois, even southern Indiana through March. We'll have to watch some of those triple point setups where we have a low pressure system with a warm front and a cold front where they all meet. That is called the triple point. And we'll, we could be seeing some severe weather setups further north as we go, especially into late March time frame. Then as we go into April, you notice still out west into California, southern Nevada and southwestern Arizona still seeing some concentration of severe potential there. But notice the area of red shifts further north now into the lower Midwestern regions and even the central Great Plains into Nebraska, Iowa and western Illinois now and even back into Colorado as well. So we start to see that shifting a little bit further to the north. And then going into May, I think May could be a very active month here later this spring as we turn to neutral conditions and out of El Nino, we could have a big year for severe weather there into the Great Plains and even the Midwest. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And then across the Mid-Atlantic up through the I-95 corridor in the Southeast, we could still see some severe weather as we go through the month of May. So here's what I came, uh, came up with with our significant tornado risk, March, April, and into May timeframe. And two distinct corridors where I think we could have some pretty high-end severe weather potential, especially into May timeframe. I think the first area down here will obviously be into Tornado Alley across portions of southern Nebraska, eastern Colorado, and then moving its way down through northeastern New Mexico, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, there into Arkansas, Louisiana, and parts of Mississippi. The second corridor here for significant tornado risk, especially like I said, into May time frame, would be across the Midwest and parts of the upper Midwest into portions of the Dakotas, northeast Nebraska, southern Minnesota, getting into Iowa, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, and getting around the southwestern lakes regions, southwestern lower Michigan, and northern Indiana. That will be a secondary area to watch for significant tornado risk, again, especially once we get toward late spring and into May. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now let's look here at the snowstorm forecast, because believe it or not, even as we go into meteorological spring starting March 1st, we still have the potential for snow here as we have the lower of the pressure down here across the eastern United States. The colder air is still hanging around, especially for the first half of March. I think there could be some low end potential for some snowstorms across portions of the Northeast and the New England coast areas, down into the Mid-Atlantic, through the Ohio Valley, and back toward the Missouri Valley and Midwest. We'll keep an eye on that. Areas of medium blue, that is a medium probability there across portions of upstate New York, western New York, getting into northern and northwestern Pennsylvania, and north northeastern Ohio here here for the potential for some snowstorms as we go through March. Once we get into April though, it's really just interior sections of the Northeast, really seeing that maybe some lake effect snowfall at times, but really once we get into April, we're going to be warming up. So not that big of a deal. And then obviously once we get into May, you notice that the temperature maps were showing well above normal temperatures across most of the United States. So as expected, no areas are included with snowstorms as we go into May. And looking here region by region, wrapping this forecast up here for the spring, Across the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Rockies, it's going to be a warm but a dry spring. And I am worried about drought across this region as we go deeper through the spring, especially into April and May. And then across the Pacific Southwest, the Four Corners region and parts of the Southern Plains here, it'll be a soggy start to spring. We're going to have that active Southern jet stream pumping in all of that Eastern Pacific moisture, very active weather, very heavy rain down here, some flash flooding potential, some severe thunderstorms potentially in the mix at times in isolated instances. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Early start to spring across portions of the Northern Plains, getting up into the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes region. I think we're going to start spring pretty early, probably as early as late March this year across this region. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then looking here, and some big storms across the heartland from the Corn Belt down through the Deep South, including Dixie Alley here in the Mississippi Valley through spring, especially April into May, could be bigger months for severe weather in traditional Tornado Alley, but also a little bit further east of there into the Mississippi Valley as well. And then in the blue across the East Coast here, including the Northeast, the Mid-Atlantic, and parts of the Southeast and Southeast Coast, a late start to spring as expected. We're going to see some snowstorm potential as we go through March. 
possibly interior areas of the northeast getting some snow even into April. But then even then, I still think the cooler air will be hanging on across the east. Whether or not you see snow with that remains to be seen, but some cooler air will continue as we go into the eastern U.S. through the late spring time frame. Well, if you like detailed weather breakdowns across North America and the tropics upcoming, tropical weather season is coming up and all throughout 2024. Make sure to subscribe to the channel down below. We'll keep you covered here with accurate weather forecasts moving forward. Be sure to press the like button down below. It helps out more than you know. Share this video with friends, family, and on social media, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Friday out there.